What's up, everybody? It's Young here with a Metal Gear Solid 5 news update. In this video, I'll be talking about tweets that I missed in one of my previous videos covering the European press's impression of the MGS5 preview event. I will also be correcting a few mistakes that I made. There is a lot to talk about, so without further ado, let's dive right into it. Let's begin by making some corrections, starting with this tweet by Francesco Fossetti, who talked about how depending on players' actions, they may lose heroism. I interpreted this as Phantom Pain having some kind of morality system, but I might be wrong about that. Heroism was also featured in Peace Walker, where higher heroism allowed players to recruit soldiers with better skills more easily. Perhaps that's the extent to the heroism system in Phantom Pain. Then again, every mechanic from Peace Walker has been bombastically expanded in Phantom Pain. So who's to say that heroism isn't some kind of morality or reputation system that will affect how the world reacts around Snake and Diamond Dogs? For example, lower heroism perhaps means that enemies will attack Mother Base more often. Or perhaps there are certain heroism caps that need to be met to interact with certain characters and move their storyline forward. The reason I keep going Going back to a morality or reputation system is because of how Francesco said that heroism is essential to make a good impression, almost as if the world around Big Boss perceives and reacts to his reputation. But I could be wrong, these are just my guesses. At the very least, I'm sure that they'll expand the heroism system further in some way like they've done with everything else. Next up, let's take a look at a tweet by Samuel Casado, which says, Fan of David Lynch? Yeah, you'll enjoy playing what I'm playing now. In my previous video, I stated that David Lynch is in part a musician, and that Samuel might have been referring to being able to listen to his music on the radio or a boombox. But many of you pointed out that David Lynch is most well known for being a movie director. Unfortunately, I haven't watched any of his movies, which include works like Eraserhead, Elephant Man, Dune, Twin Peaks, Sailor and Lula, Mulholland Drive, and Inland Empire, so I couldn't tell you what kind of director he is. But from what I've heard, his direction is often wacky, creepy, and at times nonsensical, which I think goes in line with what we have seen of Phantom Pain and Metal Gear in general. So it's more likely that Samuel was talking about the direction of Phantom Pain and its cinematics. Now, there was a tweet that did talk about music, and that was from Matthew Castle, an editor at Official Xbox Magazine. The tweet in question has since been deleted, but I had written it down prior to its deletion. In my previous video, I claimed that the tweet stated, Blowing up tanks to The Man Who Sold Me The World is spectacular, but the actual title is just The Man Who Sold The World. This song was written and performed by David Bowie, so it looks like we have pretty clear confirmation that David Bowie's music will be among the 80s pop songs that players can listen to throughout Phantom Pain. Next, I would like to correct my translation of Polish tweets from Twitter user PSX Extreme. In my previous video, I used Google Translate to provide a rough translation from the Polish source. I got most of it right, but I was given a few corrections in the comments. First up is this tweet, which I translated like so using Google Translate. But from what I was told by YouTube user Thalkael, the first sentence isn't they can steal enemies, but rather, you can steal them from enemies. Them refers to the bipedal mechs, which were referenced in the tweet prior to this one. In other words, players can steal these bipedal mechs from the Soviets, it seems. Now, I wonder how the Soviets got a hold of such advanced weapons. My money is on Huey. If you recall from my previous video, Francesco Fossetti stated that one of the missions involves finding Huey. So my assumption is that towards the beginning of the game, Huey is in enemy hands, helping them develop new weapons. One more tweet from the Polish source that was given a better translation was this one. Here is how Google translated the tweet, and here is how YouTube user Kamilus translated it. My faithful steed and light armor stayed on the hill. I went alone. Before dawn comes in, it will be much harder to hide. For my final batch of corrections, I would like to take a look at a few Italian tweets, starting with this one from Antonio Fucito. In my previous video, I translated it as, The Afghan map seems very large. It's divided into sectors, but while flying, it's possible to explore without loading or exiting. This implied that players couldn't explore completely freely by foot. But as a couple of Italian speakers pointed out, the real translation is, The Afghan map seems very large. It's divided into sectors, but it's possible to explore Explore without loading or exiting if you want. In other words, whether you're flying or on foot, the world will remain completely open. 
This next tweet also comes from Antonio, but it was deleted before I could get to it in my previous video. Fortunately, you guys brought this to my attention. Apparently, the tweet can be translated as follows. Regarding Kojima, Konami said they will provide clarity soon. In the game, however, he is present everywhere, from titles to the posters. By posters, perhaps he's referring to the fourth wall breaking posters seen in the hospital scene of Phantom Pain. It's good to know that his name will at least be prominent where it most matters, within his game. The next correction I would like to provide is a tweet by Francesco Fossetti. In my previous video, I translated his tweet as, There are secondary missions you can have Diamond Dogs members complete, but there is actually an additional bit. There are secondary missions you can have Diamond Dogs members complete, in the same manner as the Assassin's Creed Guild system. Those who have played Assassin's Creed Brotherhood may be familiar with this. In Brotherhood, players could recruit assassins and then send them out to do contract missions. If that sounds vaguely familiar, to you Metal Gear fans, that's probably because a similar mechanic can be found in Peace Walker in the form of Outer Ops. So this is further confirmation that these secondary missions that Diamond Dogs members can complete are indeed Outer Ops or some form of that. And that's pretty much it for corrections. Next, I would like to talk about tweets that I missed or ones that were added after the video. Let's start with Twitter user Anton Logvinov. He is probably the only journalist who had negative impressions from his time at the MGS5 preview event. I don't speak Russian, but YouTube user Good Ol Ultra Violence did translate a few of his tweets as follows. Playing Phantom Pain, kinda meh so far. Looks like Kojima played Ubisoft games too much. Collect this and that, light up towers. Besides, you can't skip it, it's required for the story. He also apparently added that the story has a lot of problems too. I did use Google Translate on a few of his tweets and I can confirm that this is pretty much along the lines of what he said. Oh well, you can't please everyone. Next, I would like to move on to French Twitter user Pantha. I talked about a few of his tweets in my previous video, but he replied to a bunch of fan questions after the fact. Here is what he had to say. When he was asked if the usage of Fulton was realistic, as in, if Fulton balloons can be spotted by nearby guards as they ascend, his reply was, yes, we have to be careful because enemies can see the balloons and report it via radio. He was then asked about the infiltration experience of MGS5, to which he replied, It's quite free. You can plan how you want to infiltrate. For example, you can destroy generators or communication relays. We did see a glimpse of this in one of the gameplay demos for Phantom Pain. He then added, And obviously, with your binoculars, you can spot the interesting soldiers for your mother base troop. He's likely referring to the analyzer upgrade for the binoculars. The next question asked if the AI was any good. His reply was, Frankly, I am pleasantly surprised. I approached a beautiful camp, dug into the mountains by sniping enemies, and they communicated by radio to tell others to be careful that a sniper is nearby. He then randomly added, a fellow journalist got a flare to illuminate the area at night. Speaking of night, the next question asked about indications of the day and night cycle, to which he responded, you have a watch that indicates when it's noon or midnight or when the sunrise or sunset arrives. The watch in question is likely the Seiko brand watch that we have seen throughout Phantom Pain footage. Next up is a question asking if there will be any management of stamina, injuries, etc. like in Snake Eater. The reply was, injuries are shown on the screen with blood, but you can put an arm or leg in place in case of big concern. Now that last bit I find to be quite curious. It's almost as if the user is implying that Snake can dislocate or break parts of his bodies and then put them back in place. Hard to say for sure though. Next, Panther was asked about weapons and upgrades and the prospect of soldiers serving in missions. He simply replied with, For the current mission, I am using upgraded weapons like in Peace Walker. My troops provide intel on enemies. So currently, still no signs of Diamond Dog soldiers tagging along as support buddies. The next question asked if codec interventions are as frequent as in Ground Zeroes, to which Panther replied with an extensive answer. Your codec is useful. It gives you information on targets for my mission, for example. Ocelot gives me recon information. The story's background is told via cassettes to avoid hours of lore via codec. Out of six hours, I must have had an hour and a half of codec that I could listen during infiltration. Then, I made a forceful infiltration while listening to David Bowie, and that was great. The next fan question asked whether Pantha had the chance to use the knife and if the game is vast. His reply was, the knife for now I used to kill guards that I grabbed, and the game is very vast. 
so it looks like knives may work similarly to ground zeroes, meaning they can't be used as a selected weapon like in previous games. Next, Panther was asked whether Snake can eat animals that players hunt. He simply replied with, I have not seen it yet. The next question simply inquired about cutscenes and if Panther could talk about them. He had this to say, in the mission there were cutscenes, but they are shorter than those of a conventional Metal Gear. I think that the mise-en-scene, which stands for design aspects or visual theme, will be sustained after Afghanistan. This goes in line with what Kojima stated before about bringing gameplay to the forefront and allowing that to tell most of the story, rather than having players watching cutscenes all the time. Moving on, Panther was then asked whether the skulls can be tranquilized, to which he replied, I didn't even try, I used the rocket launcher. They are really strong and creepy. Last but not least, a user asked if the A Hideo Kojima game tagline was spotted at all during the gameplay session, to which he replied, there are credits before and after all missions, so yes, you see his name often. This also corroborates what Antonio tweeted about Kojima's name appearing often throughout the game, so that's good to hear. And that's pretty much it. With that, I would like to end this news update. Thank you for tuning in. Let us know in the comments below your thoughts about some of this new information. And to be further updated on Metal Gear Solid 5, stay tuned on Yong Gear. I'll see you guys next time. Yong out.